ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय All together please Om Ajnana Chamarandasya Gananda Salakaya Chakshoron Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stabitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yukta Padakamalang Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tham Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Pridhana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhena Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapcha Kanta Nagorange Radha Vrindavanishwari Vrishabana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha Kalpa Tarubhyas Chakri Pasindu Beva Cha Padidanam Pavnebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Translation and Commentary Srila Prabhupada Chapter 8 Text number 19 of Canto 5. So, chapter entitled The Character of Bharat Maharaj. So, this is a prose verse. So, I'll read it once and then somebody can read it. Then we'll do the word for word. But it's not chanted. Nimlochiti habagavan sakala jagat shemodayas travyat japi mama na mriga vyadu nyasa agati. Any brave soul with good eyesight? Any Mataji with long range vision? Yes? <sighs> well done. So, now we'll do the word for word. Please repeat. Nimlochati sets. Ha! Alas! Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, represented as the sun, Sakala Jagat, of the, sorry, of all the universe, Shema Udaya, who increases the auspiciousness Trai Atma, one, sorry, who consists of the three Vedas, Ajya Api, until now, Mama, Mai, Na, Not, Mriga Vadu Nyasaha, this baby dear, entrusted to me by its mother. Aga Chati has come back. Translation Srila Prabhupada. 
More volume on the mic, please. Alas, when the sun rises, all auspicious things begin. Unfortunately, they have not begun for me. The sun god is the Vedas personified, but I am bereft of all Vedic principles. That sun god is now setting. Yet, the poor animal who trusted in me since its mother died has not returned. Please repeat. Alas, when the sun rises, all auspicious things begin. Unfortunately, they have not begun for me. The sun god is the Vedas personified. But I am bereft of all Vedic principles. That sun god is now setting. Yet the poor animal who trusted in me since its mother died has not returned. The poet Srila Prabhupada. In the Brahma Samhita 552, the sun is described as the eye of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yakchakshu Esa Savita Sakalakrahanan Raja Samasta Suramurti Asesha Tejaha Yasya Yagya Brahmati Sambriti Kala Chakro Govindam Adi Purisham Tamaham Bajami. As the sun rises, one should chant the Vedic mantra beginning with the Gayatri. The sun is the symbolic representation of the eyes of the Supreme Lord. Maharaj Bharat lamented that although the sun was going to set due to the poor animal's absence, he could not find anything auspicious. Bharat Maharaj considered himself most unfortunate for due to the animal's absence, there was nothing auspicious for him in the presence of the sun. Bakam karochi vacha lam pangam lai te girim yat kri patamahambande shri guru dinatarinam. Nim lokati ha bhagavan sakala jagat che modyas travyati yapi. Mama na briga vadu nyasa agati, agachtiti. Alas, when the sun rises, all auspicious things begin. Unfortunately, they have not begun for me. The sun god is the Vedas personified, but I am bereft of all Vedic principles. That sun god is now setting. Yet the poor animal who trusted in me since its mother died has not returned. So, the character of Maharaj Bharat. Actually here, Maharaj Bharat is so chitty, huh? lamenting. There's one verse in the Gita. Pramabhuta prasanatma no sochiti na kangshiti samak sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labate param. So Maharaj Bharat, he's fallen down to the material platform. He's given up his spiritual practices, which are his prime duty for the intelligent and he has become attached to a deer, his dear deer. Huh? He says, which the mother has entrusted to me. No, she hasn't entrusted it. She was escaping a lion and she had a miscarriage. It fell in the river and you saved it. That mother was trying to escape the jaws of death. But you haven't learnt anything from that. You've fallen down from your spiritual practice which will free you from the jaws of death. Which is like a roaring lion in the jungle. 
and you become sentimental about a deer. Uh, yes, you have compassion, but it is not the compassion of a spiritually realized soul. It is the compassion of a materialist for the shirt and coat. Prabhupada used to use the example that somebody's drowning, so you dive into the river or the ocean and you pull out his coat and pants and you say to the wife who is shouting, I've saved your husband, look, here's his shirt and pants. What will she say? You'll say, you fool, you idiot, he's still in the water. Jump in again. <laughs> so material compassion <laughs> and stay there. <laughs> so material compassion is to do with the water, uh, the, the body. We think, oh, I'll save the deer, make it live for 20 years or so. And then I've done a wonderful thing. No, the deer will die today or tomorrow. Huh? Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha, we chant. The Vaishnav. Huh? Goranga Bhumi. That the six Goswamis, they were the embodiment of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. But that mercy, that Kripa, that compassion, is not solely on the bodily platform, but it is primarily how to free someone from birth and death. The soul, the body is the dress. Huh? The body, the mind, that is the dress of the soul. And if you are feeding the body and giving mundane education, you are ignoring the soul. And in fact, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta in his essays, say, says that if you just serve people materially in compassion, this is a great harm. Why? Because it is increasing the bodily platform. It is advertising that the problems of the world can be solved by material compassion. So it is distracting people from the real problem and the real solution which is spiritual realization. Huh? Human life is meant for spiritual realization. Janma kama timedivyam evam yobadi tatpataha When you know Krishna in truth, that means directly, transcendentally, directly realizing the nature of Krishna and his activities then you don't take birth in this material world, but you attain eternal life. So that is real compassion to emphasize, to direct people to that. And if you maintain mundane education and mundane welfare works and ignore the spiritual, then you're just giving people a comfortable situation as they go to the slaughterhouse. As they remain in the cycle of birth, death, old age, disease. Huh? Janma Mrityu Vyadi. So, Vita Raga Bhaya Kroda Manmaya Mam Upasricha Gita 410 By taking shelter of me Upasrita, many souls in the past became free of attachment, fear and envy, anger, groda. So it's very interesting how the Acharyas explain those attachments, fear and envy, raga, baya and groda. You might think that they will explain in the material sense, but they explained, Vishwanath and uh, Baladev, they explain that this attachment uh, which should be placed upon the Supreme Lord, when we place this attachment to mountain objects and mountain people, 
This is actually a rebellion against our real nature. Because our real attachment should be to Krishna. Aham sarvasya pravavo. Angsa. We are Vibhinangsa. We are Tatasta Shakti. So when we do not act with attachment to the Supreme Lord and instead we become attached to the material this can be viewed uh, as a symptom of tamishra rebellion against our real nature instead of becoming attached to Krishna no who has given me existence, knowledge and bliss who's given me that potency who's made me an eternal soul I won't become, a I'll be attached to the wife and children, my television set my land, my country so the Bhagavatam, Amala Puran says this is cheating religion Dharma Projita Kaitavotra just to become attached to the mundane affairs is actually a rebellion against the Supreme Lord. And then Raga, Bhaya. So you might think the Acharyas will describe Bhaya as a fearfulness. Hmm? No, but no, they say that this fearfulness that is the root of our anxiety, our kunta in the material world is actually the root is our fearfulness that if we go to Krishna if we become attached to Krishna that we will lose something huh? oh if I start chanting Hare Krishna I'll lose my attachment to the material world I'll have a loss I'll have to give up my drinking my philandering, my plasma TV, my attachment to the cricket team. Oh, this is a terrible, fearful situation. And then there may be other reasons. One may be uh, badly influenced. And so when he comes to the temple or he stands outside the temple, uh, he may be badly influenced. Uh, there may be some pishasha, buta. Oh, I can't go in there. Huh? The, the vibration. What is it? <laughs> so, they're fearful of spirit. There's some loss. Subtle and gross. Sri Sri Gornitai, Krishna Balaram, Radhisham, Sandalili, Vishaka, Giri Govardhan, Shalagram Maharaj, Gomata, Tulsi Maharani, Sri Guru Parampara, Ki Jai. So this Bhaya is also rooted in our attachment to the material world. And that attachment is rooted in Tamishra. Tamishra is the first covering of the conditioned soul. Rebelliousness. Oh, why should I uh, serve Tatastha Shakti? Why should I serve Krishna? Better I serve myself in the material world. And then Krodaha. That's the next step. Tamasic. Tamasic covering. Oh, this Supreme Lord. Look. And so the atheistic people, they have so many krodaha arguments. Oh, there's no God. Look, here's the proof. Bharat Maharaj is society, he's lamenting. How can there be a God if there's misery? He's a good man. He wants to look after the deer. But God has made the deer go away. Well, if you don't believe in God, why are you saying God has made the deer go away? Huh? And just refusing the existence of God because you don't like the idea of God, that is not very good. Just like you may not like uh, somebody, that doesn't mean to say that person doesn't exist. 
You have to separate the existence from the personality that you're projecting. Hmm? Just like you made in England there was one politician, Margaret Thatcher. She was very controversial. She did many things. So if I say to you, if I say to you, Margaret Thatcher had a very bad personality, therefore she doesn't exist. What will you think? If I say, if I'm in the prison, Tihar jail, <coughs> and I say, the government has put me here, they're all devils, therefore they don't exist. Is this very reasonable? So this is what the atheists say. They have all these arguments. I can't accept the idea of a God that tells me what to do. Wait a minute, you're contradicting yourself. You're a drunkard and you're blaspheming the idea of God. He's not stopping you. Huh? So this is the straw, do straw God. The straw man argument is when you ascribe false ideas to somebody and then defeat that idea and then say that you've defeated that person in argument but that's not correct because uh, just by saying that God is bad doesn't mean to say he doesn't exist maybe God is bad just because something's bad or the material world is so-called bad according to your estimation doesn't mean to say God is exist not existing rather you're in the prison house you're suffering you're suffering in this world and therefore that is indicative that there is somebody in control of you right it is not conclusive it is inductive argument oh you're under control therefore there must be a controller or maybe it's not ultimate proof and then the other side the theistic person will say no I believe in God because it makes people better but that's also inductive it's not conclusive like you may believe in fairy tales because it makes you feel better it doesn't mean to say fairy tales are real now it can be said, yes, people who do believe in a supreme person, they become uh, better in nature. But it is not a conclusive argument. You may believe in Donald Duck and it makes you happy. But that doesn't mean to say Donald Duck is a real person. Huh? So by argumentation, you cannot come to a conclusion one way or the other of the existence of the Supreme Lord that's why Krishna says mam maya mam upashrita you have to take shelter of me and then what does that mean how do you take shelter there is one uh, in the Vedanta Sutra second adaya first pada verse 11 um, Tarkena Pratishthanat it starts that means by Tarka you cannot come to a conclusion you can argue there is God there isn't God and you cannot come to a conclusion because you can always give some opposite argumentation huh? therefore in also Majalila 17th chapter verse 121 so that is the start of that sloka Lord Chaitanya instructing Sanatan and Rupa he says Takena Pratishtana uh, but then he finished that sloka it's from the Mahabharat so Mahajyena Katasvapanta if you argue then you'll end up if you're honest agnostic in western philosophical terms agnostic means I don't know if there is a God or not so I'm not an atheist and I'm not a theist 
because I can't come to any conclusion. And this is correct because the Supreme Lord, Tattvata, in truth, is transcendental to the material mind and senses. If you use pratyaksha, sense perception, and anuman, analysis of this sense perception, this experience of the material world, if you use that, it's a very inefficient process. Because the senses are limited. You may expand them by using a microscope or a telescope, but you're still focused on material energy. And therefore we see, presently in the material world, they think, well, the only thing we can focus upon as an explanation is matter. Atoms and molecules in some state of energy. And we can't discover the truth of it. As soon as we look into the atoms and molecules, we find more and more things. We try to write mathematical formula, but then we discover something that contradicts this. Huh? But the Vedas say the Supreme Lord is transcendental. And if you want to realize directly the Supreme Lord beyond argumentation, beyond confusion of maybe this, maybe that, I think this, no, that's not right, this one, and this tarka, argumentation, endless, then you have to take shelter of the path given by the Mahajans. In the Vedanta Sutra, right, how does it start? Atato Brahma Dignas. Now you're a human, you should inquire into the Absolute Truth, like Bharat Maharaj started. And what is the Absolute Truth? Janmadi Asiya Yata. That Absolute Truth is that from whom everything has emanated. And then the third sloka, Shastra Yonitva. That means the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Lord, is known through the Shastra. So in this sloka we see here, uh, Prabhupada explains, the Vedas are like the sun, they illuminate. But the Vedas have to be accepted in disciplic succession. Mahajyena Katasvapanta. If you just go to the Vedas, without consulting the sadhus, without consulting guru, parampara, there's four Vai, uh, Vaishnav Sampradaya, if you don't take shelter of the guru, sadhu and shastra, and use your reasoning power in relationship to the shastra, then you're just like licking the outside of a bottle of honey. And therefore, so many scholars all over the world. Oh, the Vedas, maybe this, they say this. The Sanskrit grammar is very interesting. Huh? They say this here, there's this yogi here. Maybe they mean this, maybe they mean that. I think it's a traditional wisdom. They never really taste. They never get any rasa. So therefore, Tadvidi pratipatena pariprasnena sevaya upadaksyanti te jnanam jnanas tattva dashina. So when Krishna says manmana mam upashritya vitaraga baya kroda, he means you have to take shelter. And you take shelter through Guru Parampara. You don't go to the Vedas in a mood of speculation as you have been studying in the material world huh? through pratyaksha, anuman reasoning and experiential knowledge no, shabda shabda is shruti, smriti it is the Vedas when you study in that way 
at the lotus feet of a spiritually realized soul then very quickly you can under understand the nature of the material world the nature of the spiritual world your own nature as a spirit soul but if you employ the speculative system or you go to the Vedas with an agenda then your realization will be askew just in the same way that people in the scientific methodology they try to realize the nature of an atom or a molecule but their understanding is askew because they're using inefficient methodology the senses are limited our experience is limited our ability to analyze is subject to limitation so we come to false conclusions even if we apply that method to the Vedas and the absolute truth is factual and real it is not a matter of speculation so therefore if we follow the right mythology we realize the absolute truth as it is so here the Vedas are compared to the Sun they illuminate trans the material world the darkness of the material world so here Maharaj Bharat is saying that the sun is setting so I've lost my Vedic principles and I've also lost my dear so he has lost his connection with the transcendental platform and he's also lost the object of his material attachment so Brahma Buddha Brahma Bhuta Prasanatman Soshati Na Kangshati this Soshati Kangshati lamentation and hankering is the nature of the material world the phases of material existence we hanker for something and then when we lose it we lament ah this person this girl will make me as happy as a prince in this world but then there's another phase we become fearful now I've attained her but we fear she will leave me and then when time breaks the union we lament uh, so in this material world all the poets all the writings are simply about these phases hankering fearing and lamenting and we see this embodied here but what we should draw from this is very instructive just in the same way that we can attain Krishna by our own effort so we can lose Krishna by our uh, straying from the path Maharaj Bharat has brought this upon himself after that Vita Raga Bhaya verse there is Yayatam Mam Prapajante Tam Saiva Bhajami Aham all of them as they surrender unto me I reciprocate so at the beginning we saw Maharaj Bharat he was attaining almost Bhava Bhakti 
by his meditation and puja. But distracted by the deer, by his own choice, the operation of his own control of consciousness, he left his spiritual practice and became attached to the deer. So Krishna is reciprocating with him when he's doing his sadhana properly and Krishna is reciprocating him when he's falling down. He's giving him all sorts of material ras here. Oh, the sun is setting but my dear is not returning. And he's even intuiting, yes, I've lost my Vedic principles. So we have to understand this. This is a key point in spiritual life. That Yeyatam Mam Prapadyante means that Krishna will reciprocate. But if we don't go to Krishna, then Krishna will let us go to Maya. You see, this is a very important point. You may go to Maya and like Maharaj Bharat here, I'm losing my Vedic principles, but that doesn't mean you're not in Maya. If you want to go to Krishna, you have to be proactive. You can't think, oh, now I know a few slokas, I know the Ma Mantra. It'll all happen automatically. If you buy a sitar and you have all the instruction books and you have a sitar teacher even, will you automatically become a sitar player? Huh? You may polish the sitar every day. You may tell, look, I've got a nice sitar to your friends. But will you become a sitar player? No, you have to put your fingers on the fretboard and the strings. You have to practice. And according to how you practice, your ability will develop. And you may do a little practice and be, become reasonably good. But then you put your practice aside. And a year later you find, well, I can't play anymore. So spiritual life is reciprocating with Krishna. And Krishna, he respects your free will. If you want to become a pure devotee, if you want bhava bhakti, if you want prem bhakti, lobdha, then Krishna will give it to you. But if you let yourself be distracted by attachment, fear and anger, rebelliousness, and you give up your practice and man 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 mana madapasrita, then Krishna will okay. So this is very important point. But as it says in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, when you do, after going to Krishna, then you will remember, oh, once upon a time I was a devotee chanting and doing puja and kirtan and studying Bhagavatam. But now I'm just watching the television every night and uh, worrying about politics. Huh? So you will have some fall over from your spiritual practice. But still you'll be covered by the material energy. And so, if you want to become that expert sitar payer, you have to maintain your sankalp, your determination. You have to practice regularly, not once a day, uh, once a month. I go to the temple once a month. No, you have to practice Kirtaniya Sadahari. And that practice has to be accompanied by Lobta. 
We want the material world, Krishna will give us the material world. We want to realize Krishna, Krishna will give us vidya, give us realization. This sloka is very clear. This is the whole point of this section. The Bhagavatam is very progressive. So in this section here, fifth canto, story of Maharaj Bharat, what becomes in his next life? Becomes a deer. He doesn't go to uh, Bhoma Leela, doesn't become an associate of Krishna, he becomes a deer. But he remembers by grace of Krishna that once I was a devotee. And then after becoming a deer, that deer, then he goes to the ashram. It's very interesting. He play, he lives near the ashram of the sages. Here the deer is running away. But when he's a deer and he tries to associate with the sages. And then his next life, he becomes Jad Bharat. And Maharaj Rahugana and the rest. So this is to instruct us that when we are in the middle position, when we haven't attained bhava bhakti, when we haven't become liberated from raga, bhaya, kroda, then we should be very, very careful and not be distracted by material emotion. It sounds like he's a good man. Oh, he wants to take care of the deer. But actually, he's failing a test. So a devotee, he is not impersonal. Samaksaveshu bhuteshu madbhaktim labate. Samaksaveshu bhuteshu and pandita samadashana in the Gita. It doesn't mean to say a devotee has no compassion. But that compassion should be for the soul, not for the body. If we construct a material civilization, a utopia, it will always be a failure. Huh? Oh, everyone will be materially, bodily happy and educated. Everyone will be moral. That will be failure. There has to be a spiritual core, but not a spiritual core of mental speculation and man-made scriptures. Like we see in Kali Yuga, these ideas, uh, man-made scriptures. Maybe God's like this, maybe he's like that. Oh, maybe he's angry. Maybe he's asking for the sacrifice of the firstborn. Maybe I should conquer the world for God. Huh? Conquer the world for God? What vision of God is that? Krishna, the Supreme Lord, is in control of every atom and molecule already. Where did you get that idea from? And then there'll be disturbance. And then man-made scriptures, they tend to make people atheistic. Because they cannot satisfy the intellect. They make people agnostic. But the Vedas, this is our, and the Vedic message of the sages is, this is our proud assertion. That the Vedas are Shabda Brahman. They are the accurate description of the material and spiritual creation, the spirit soul and the nature of the Supreme Lord. It is beyond mental speculation. And if you want to know it's true, then as Lord Chaitanya, then, oh dear man, put aside your very learned, right? Put aside everything. You're very learned, you're studied everything, you're a professor renowned throughout the universe, but put that all aside and meditate upon the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And what is that mercy? 
that kele dosha nide rajan asti heka mahat gunan that kali yuga now is an ocean of fault but it has one good quality kirtanad eva krishnasya mukta sanga parambrajat by kirtan you can attain the supreme lord directly in full realization so this is our presentation to the world this is the presentation of shrila prabhupad shrila bhakti siddhanta all the acharyas so don't you think you should at least try huh okay maybe we're wrong prove us prove us wrong read prabhupad's books read the bhagavatam read the chaitanya charitamrita and chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and see if nothing happens but be very careful though because if you do this if you go to the bank of the jamuna where krishna is standing in tribanga form playing the flute attracting the mind the consciousness of all living entities then you should know you should be you're in a very difficult condition you may give up all your attachment all your fear all your anger and you may find yourself attaining eternal life full of bliss and knowledge so be very careful if you take to this chanting but those who take to the chanting they know the magic uh, those that don't chant